Hello everyone, my name is Shazeb Hamid and welcome to AI Sciences. Today we are going to see about credit card fraud detection Python project with the help of machine learning, right? So first of all, we should go on to the importing of all the libraries. So the first library that we are going to need is NumPy. So let's write import NumPy as NP. After that, the second library that we are going to need is Pandas. So for that, we will write import pandas as pd later we can import matplotlib and seaborn as well right so for that let's import matplotlib first which will be matplotlib dot pyplot as plt right and at the end we are going to import seaborn as sns so let's run this and let's move forward after doing that okay so other than that there is another library that we are going to need and that library is grid spec which is also available in matplotlib so let's write that as well so from matplotlib import grid spec so let's write that okay so there we go now we have all the libraries that we are going to need the next step is to take a look at the data that we are going to use in this specific project right so for that let's uh, use pandas and let's write data is equal to pd dot read underscore csv and in that i'm going to write credit dot csv this is the name of the file and that we are going to use and i have already uploaded it into the folder that uh, is for this uh, specific code right so now that we have uploaded the data into data panda frame right the next step is to see its head so for that let's write data dot head and we'll see the head right so this is the complete data set that we are going to use this is time then v1 v2 as you can see we have five rows and a total of 31 columns right now what is the next step the next step is actually to also see the shape of the data frame as well as uh, use the describe command to see what are the specifications of our data set so first let me enter a few no new rows and after doing that we are going to do is we are going to write print right i'm using the print command you can do it without that as well right so print data dot shape and this is the shape of the data that we have right so it is showing us that it has uh, this much rows and this much columns okay and after that what is the next step the next step is to also see a few attributes of our data and for that we are going to use data dot describe which is also a built-in function that is available to us so this is the complete data i have also shown its head to you and you can uh, see the complete data as well right so for the first column we have uh, these described uh, you know count the this is the number of values this is their mean then standard deviation then the minimum value in that 25 percent accuracy 70 percent 75 percent 50 percent and a maximum value so in the same way it does that for all of the columns that are available to us now what is the next step the next step is to do a little bit of data preparation and to time out the imbalance that is available in the data right so for that what i'm going to do is i am going to take two classes and name one class as fraud and the second one as valid right so fraud is equal to data and wherever data class is equal to one right at that time we will have the fraud uh, you know uh, condition true and wherever it is equal to zero the class right in the data we will say that at that time we will have a valid input or a valid credit card statement right after that we can also calculate what are the outliers that are present right so uh, let's do that in the next cell 
so first let's do that and as you can see we can see the outliers by just dividing the fraud by valid right so if there are 10 fraud values and 5 valid values so dividing 10 by 5 will give us a outlier fraction right so let's run that so outlier fraction is equal to length of fraud right length of fraud divided by and valid might not be in uh, you know floating number right so let's take the, uh, a floating component in this as well and then length of valid so we will calculate the outlier fraction with the help of this and after doing that what we will do is we will just print out this outlier fraction so let's do that as well and let's run it and this is the outlier fraction that we have available in our data so 0 0.001 is the outlier fraction that is available right now after doing that we can just uh, you know print out the fraud cases right um, because we already have everything into our account right so we can just write print out something like uh, first let's write fraud cases so fraud cases and after that let's give it a uh, you know syntax right and then i'll write dot format and here i'll write length of data at data of class is equal to one right so wherever data of class equal to one uh, will get us the fraud cases so fraud cases in our case are 492 in the same way we can also calculate the uh, you know value transactions as well so let's just copy this paste this here and write something like valid transactions and in that we are going to say it that pick the values where class is equal to zero right so these are the valid transactions and these are the fraud cases right that are available in our data set right now how can we get the more details about the fraudulent cases is the next step right so for example if we have this much of fraud cases how can we see what are more details about that right so for that we are going to use the same command which is the describe command so let's write that fraud dot amount dot describe there we go so this is showing us that there are 492 fraud cases right and their mean is this their standard deviation is this their minimum maximum all of these things are available to us right now in the same way we can do this for valid transactions as well so for that what we have to do is we have to just write valid instead of fraud and these are the valid transactions that are available inside our data set right now what is the next step if we want to showcase uh, these fraud and valid transactions and we want to show with the help of a graph or, or a correlation metric something like that right so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the correlation matrix right so correlation matrix is equal to data dot co double r okay and after that what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a new figure which is fig is equal to plt dot figure and in that i'm going to write fig size is equal to 12 comma 9 right after that i am going to use uh, sns as well right what is sns sns is what we have uh, imported seaborn as right as you can see here right so we are using uh, seaborn heat function right heat map basically right and in this we are going to write core mat that we have actually calculated just now 
and after that i am going to write v max is equal to 0.8 and at the end what i am going to do is i am going to write square is equal to true so that it looks better right in the form of squares and after that i am just going to show you the data okay so this is the complete data that we have this is the correlation matrix and as you can see uh, the complete data was uh, uh, put it up right and uh, what we did with that was we took the correlation between all of the columns of the data right so for example let me show you something if we are talking about v1 versus v1 so this is the correlation for that heat map right it must be one right in the same way uh, when we are talking about something like v13 versus v1 so it is something like this in purple right so it, it is 0 0.8 with most white and it is uh, most purple with zero right so that's why you can see that most white are right here because these are all self correlations right these are the correlations between uh, the column with itself right as you can see this is the correlation between v23 and v23 right on both sides we will get to v23 so this is how we can use correlation matrix to showcase what is available in our data in our case we are doing it to uh, visualize the fraudulent versus uh, the valid cases right so after that the next step is to make x and y data right so x is equal to data dot drop and in this i'm going to write class and after that i'm going to write x is equal to one and after that i'm going to write y is equal to so all the classes is going to be the classes you know column is going to be in y and everything else is going to be in x right so that's why we want and after that we can just visualize x dot shape and y dot shape so let's run that so these uh, th this is it right it is only showing us uh, y dot shape right now and we can also showcase x dot shape as well so all of the values that are available in x and y should be given to a specific new variable right so let's say that that variable is x data and x data equal to x dot values in the same way y data is equal to y dot values right so let me write big d here so y data and x data and after that what i am going to do is uh, it is saying that x is not defined it is a big x right here so x dot values let's run this again now it has done that and after that what i'm going to do is i'm going to use kit learn to sort of uh, you know divide this into train test data set so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to write from sklearn dot model underscore selection import train underscore test underscore split right and after that i'm going to write x train then x test then i'm going to write y train and then i'm going to write y test and here after that i'm going to write train underscore test underscore split and how do i want to split it i want to split the x data and y data and the test size should be something like 0 0.2 right so that 80 percent is used for training and the remaining is used for testing and let's also give it random random underscore state is equal to 42 okay now after doing that 
what is the next step the next step is to use an algorithm right so the machine learning algorithm that we are going to use is random forest classifier right so the first step is to make that classifier and after that we are going to use that to perform prediction so for that let's write from sk learn dot ensemble right import random forest forest and then classifier classy after that what we are going to do is we are going to actually make this classifier rfc is equal to random forest classy fire and after doing that what is the next step the next step is to perform fitting and prediction so first let's perform fitting so rfc dot fit and sorry fit and then i'm going to write x train comma y train and after performing fitting what is the next step the next step is to perform prediction so for that let's actually write y and after that i'm going to write prediction i'm also waiting on this result as well right so y predict is equal to rfc dot predict so predict and after that i'm going to write x test so i am training on you know x train and y train and then i am using x test to give us a prediction and that prediction will be saved in y predict right so let's wait for this to run so after doing that what we can do is we can actually check the accuracy right so let's test its precision score right so or we can also check out the accuracy score as well right so first let's import the accuracy score library so from sklearn dot metrics import accuracy dot underscore score right and in that after loading it into this what we are going to do is we are going to write accuracy is equal to uh, you know accuracy score right and in that i'm going to write y underscore test comma y predict so the things that we had were in y test and the things that we predicted are in y predict so let's run this it is saying that y test is not defined so let's see it is y test right so let's take that let's change it like this and now let's run this again it will say that y predict is also not available so let's change that as well okay so now we can just look at the accuracy and there we go as you can see we have a very accurate result so what is it showing it's showing that it is a 99.9% .9 accurate that we have uh, you know uh, measured which was uh, you know fraudulent case and which was valid case right so in this way you can use any sort of algorithm uh, here as well right other than that you can use any data to first prepare it then visualize it and then at the end of the day using something like uh, you know random forest or some other technique to perform the machine learning analysis right so this is it for today for more videos like this keep watching ai sciences Thank you.